Welcome to When Nerds Learn to Fly. Today I have a little extra time since our trip has been postponed until October 8th. So I thought I would take a chance to video blog about planning this trip to Tibet. Planning this trip started when I found an ultra cheap flight to Xi'an, China from Orlando Airport. For $592, I was able to fly round trip and fly into Xi'an. Corey did a thesis on the Terracotta Warriors. Flying into Xi'an would give us the opportunity to check out the Terracotta Warriors and something he was interested in. In, I thought, okay, how hard is it going to be to try to incorporate Tibet into that? It ended up being harder than I thought. Tibet is considered an autonomous region of China. I equate it to Puerto Rico and the U.S. Puerto Rico is not a state, it's a commonwealth of the U.S. It's kind of like that. Obviously, I'm going to have to get a visa for China. We went through a visa company because we didn't want to have to drive all the way to the nearest consulate. Here's the deal with the visa. They're very specific with the information they want. There's four pages worth of questions that you have to answer. Then they're real specific about the way that the photo on it looks. They could deny your visa for any reason. They suggest that you don't put on your application that you're going to Tibet when you apply for the visa. Well, we are going to Tibet, so how do you do that? Especially since they ask for for copies of your flight, which include the arrival and departure dates, and they ask for your hotel stay while in China, and that has to match the flights. Well, if you're staying in Tibet, then your hotel doesn't exactly match those flights. So what you do is you book a hotel that has a no cancellation fee, apply for your visa, and once you get your visa in your hot little hand, you cancel that hotel. You're not supposed to tell China you're going to Tibet, but you have to tell Tibet that you're Coming. That includes getting a Tibetan permit. The only way to get a Tibetan permit is if you have a tour scheduled or a guide scheduled. It, this helps their tourism. It's a great way to help the economy. That left us in kind of a a pitch. We love to travel independently. We've done every kind of tour you could possibly do, both group, completely independent, hotel, airfare, but we really don't enjoy the group tours. It seems like you always end up with someone who's either rude to the local people or all they want to do is shop or they're always late and makes everybody wait on them. So we've kind of pulled away from wanting to do any group tours. We were able to find that you can do private tours. They're a little bit more expensive, and as frugal as we are, that hurts. We save as much money as we can so we can travel more often. But for a trip as big as this that involves these spiritual, quiet places, we didn't want to be on a group tour. The way that we started looking for a company, I went online, I researched TripAdvisor, anything, any blog, any talk, anything like that, pulled up different websites, and then I started to send out requests for estimates on their prices. I got estimates from a lot of companies. We wanted to go through a local company because, you know, you want to contribute to the local community and their economy. Me. Plus, who's going to know the area better than someone who is from there and that lives there? Finally, I got something from ExploreTibet.com from Sherry, and there was an automatic comfort. I don't know if it's the way she communicated, but she was straightforward, appeared to be honest and kind. There was just, I don't know how you explain that. You just get a feeling about whether you made the right decision or not. And Sherry has been awesome through everything, even all of the complications from this crazy hurricane. Her kindness is probably the only reason that we're actually getting to go to Tibet, her and her manager and, and that company. So if you need to go to Tibet, ExploreTibet.com. I'm giving them my highest recommendation and I haven't even been there yet. Got the Tibet permit taken care of, got the Chinese visa taken care of, have a guide and a driver, and they'll take care of all of the hotel arrangements, locations there in Tibet that and started booking hotels in Xi'an and getting all of that set up, we had to do the transportation. Originally, we were going to take a train in and a train out due to Irma. We now are taking a flight in, and last night we heard that we were able to procure two sleeper cars from Lhasa to Xining, and then from Xining to Xi'an will be in hard seats. 
So we have to transfer trains, but we got those soft sleepers for the long portion of the trip. And I'll talk in another blog about the trains because that's a, a whole different thing. There you go. We've got our planes, our trains, our hotels, our permits, our visas. And it looks like at this point, hopefully, we will fly out on the 8th and have this amazing trip to Tibet. And then we can get into the real blogs, the, the, the things about this trip, the really cool stuff. Right now, it's just the planning stuff. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Uh, we'll see you on the next vlog.